views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or owners. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. Glad you're with us tonight. And uh, we're going to be talking about uh, some things in the news. Is Donald Trump a Christian? <laughs> is Ted Cruz a Christian? Is, is Bernie Sanders a Christian? Who, who really is a Christian? We're going to be talking about tonight. But first, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving you our phone, contact information. Word from the Lord at gmail.com is how you can reach me by email, 276-340-2653. Uh, is how you can reach me by phone. If you'd like a Bible study, if you'd like anything that we are giving away free, uh, Caleb advertised the muscle and shovel book, and we're giving those away. Those are free to you if you just give us uh, some information where we can get those to you. I have some that uh, I need to get out. Uh, so if you're sitting there saying, I asked for one and you didn't give it to me, well, I'm, I'm, getting, it. I'm getting it there. Just please be patient. <clears throat> but we uh, hope that you will take advantage of these things, friends, because we are sincere about helping you understand the will of God. And if we can do that in, in any way, home Bible study or DVDs or what have you, I know some of you are watching uh, on uh, YouTube. You're watching us uh, the day after the program comes on. Some of you are watching live, and some of you are, are uh, trying to keep up with uh, uh, what's going on here in this area. We appreciate that. We appreciate you watching and uh, telling us uh, that you're watching. Those of you in the community, we invite you to come out. We hope that you'll do that. 250 The Boulevard is where we're meeting in Eden, 823 Starting Avenue in Martinsville, and 120 American Legion in Danville is where the Saints meet in Martinsville, Danville, and Eden. And so we hope that you will come out and be with us uh, and study the God's Word with us. In Eden, we meet on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock, and we're studying the book of uh, 1 Thessalonians, and so we'd like for you to come out and study that with us. <clears throat> on uh, Sunday mornings, we're actually studying Bible geography. A lot of things you probably didn't know about, about the Bible that you'll learn if you just study Bible geography. Learn about where the... Uh, uh, the uh, uh, Patriarchs traveled and uh, things that went on, uh, things that might help to st help your study. Uh, the individuals that uh, we're studying with uh, seem to really be enjoying it. Every time I teach geography, everybody seems to like it, and I think they get a lot out of it. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, never heard a, a study on that, come out and be with us on Sunday mornings and uh, for that very uh, good uh, study. Uh, uh, so anyway, well, friends, like we said. We are going to talk about uh, who is a Christian. The reason I bring this up is not because I'm going to talk politics. I don't really want to talk politics. Uh, so don't call me up and say who you're voting for, that sort of thing. Not, not going to go there. But what I am going to do is bring out something that was said because it ties into what we're always saying. Now, several months ago, uh, Donald Trump said about uh, um, Dr. Ben Carson, he said, if you look, Trump said, if you look at his faith, I don't think you're going to find so much. No words saying that because he was Seventh-day Adventist, uh, he's not really a religious guy. Uh, <clears throat> Trump said that he's not a big religious figure, so well, what does that mean? I don't know, but he's questioning his faith, you know. So can we really talk about people's faith? That We get it all the time. You're not supposed to talk about people. Mr. Trump did it. Then, uh, not too long ago, Donald Trump said about Ted Cruz. Is he really a Christian? I mean, here's what he said. He said, how can Ted Cruz be an evangelical Christian when he lies so much? Well, he really hasn't disproven any lies that I know of, but yet he just says, well, he's lying, therefore he's not a Christian. So Mr. Trump is using some criteria that, that uh, of his own, I guess, that says, well, I'm going to say he's not a Christian because here's what he's doing. Then... Uh, some time ago, after uh, about the same time frame, I guess, then uh, oh, the you know the, the the Italian daddy comes over, Papa, the big Papa comes on over from uh, uh, Italy, from the Vatican City, and he says that Donald Trump's not a Christian. Here's what he said: He said a person who thinks only about building walls, wherever they may be, and not building bridges, is not Christian. This is not the gospel. So now he's saying Donald Trump's not, not a Christian. Well, <clears throat> Donald didn't like that, but I guess what goes around comes around. Now, here's my question. Here's my point of bringing all this up, friends. Again, don't, don't call me with your, with, your, with your political questions, but I want you to think about this. You've got Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, Ben Carson, and the Pope, 
And they're all talking about, or the conversation is all about who is a Christian or their Christianity. Now, Mr. Trump said you shouldn't talk about someone else's Christianity, but yet he did. I don't know. Is that the Christian thing to do? I don't know. Are, are we talking about Christian acts? Are we talking about Christian deeds? What are we talking about here? Well, the only thing I know, friends, is we need to go to the Bible to find out who really is a Christian. Because we have this conversation quite often with individuals who claim to be Christians, and yet we get grief if we say, well, they're not a Christian. Now, we may give politicians passes when they talk about people's Christianity. We may give the Pope a pass, or he may get a pass when he talks about someone's Christianity, whether they're a Christian or not. <clears throat> but I'm more concerned about what the Bible says about Christianity and who is really a Christian. Now, here's something you may not have known or may not have realized. But the word Christian is only found three times in the Bible. Now, you may find that hard to believe, but it's only found three times in the Bible. Actually, Christian, singular, is only found twice. Christians is uh, uh, used once. But three times, individuals are called Christians or Christian three times in the Bible. That's all. But yet, I want to tell you, friends, that from those three verses, those three verses, Acts eleven twenty six, Acts 26, 28, and 1 Peter 4, 8, uh, 1 Peter 4, 16, you can learn a lot about what a Christian really is just from those three verses and the context of those verses. So what I want to do is find out, if we find out who's really a Christian, maybe we should find out what a Christian really is. That may be the, the best place to start. So, so what does it mean to be a Christian? First, let's find out what it means to be a Christian. Well, <clears throat> first of all, a Christian does something or acts a certain way. Look at this. In 1 Peter, let's get our Bible up here. In 1 Peter 4, 1 Peter 4 and verse 16, we're going to look at what the Bible says about being a Christian. All right? Here we go. Let me uh, make this just a little bit larger. All right? Make sure we can read it here. 1 Peter 4, 16. All right. Here's what Peter says. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Now, here's one thing you can know about a Christian. <clears throat> a Christian will wear the name of Christ. In other words, he'll be identified as a Christian. He doesn't have a problem being identified as a Christian, and he will say that he's a Christian. All right? So when I'm looking at a Christian, if I, or someone says they're a Christian, I listen to how they identify themselves. What do they call themselves? You know what? Dr. Ben Carson, he may be a good man. You may be voting for him. I don't know. But you know what? He calls himself Seventh-day Adventist. Donald Trump, you may be voting for him. I don't know. Don't care. You know what? He, he's a Presbyterian. Ted Cruz, He's a Baptist. The Pope, he's a Catholic. Now, here's what I know. A Christian is identified by the name of Christ. Where's the name of Christ? Now, they say, oh, we're Christians, but then they give other names that indicate that, well, there's something else other than a Christian. The Bible doesn't talk about wearing hyphenated names. There's no such thing as a Baptist Christian, a Methodist Christian, Presbyterian Christian, Seventh-day Adventist Christian, or, Pope, uh, or excuse me, a Catholic Christian. No such thing. But the Bible does talk about wearing the name of Christ. As a Christian, you're suffering as a Christian, not to be ashamed. Well, I think that when individuals, when individuals talk about being a Christian and then call themselves or identify themselves with another name, that makes me think, well, maybe they're ashamed of the name Christian. But Jesus, or excuse me, Peter said, if any man suffer shame as a Christian, all right? If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Now, friends, I'm not ashamed to be called a Christian. As a matter of fact, when people call me or when they talk to me and ask me about my faith or what I'm religious, I say, I'm a Christian. I'm just a Christian. I'm just a Christian. As a matter of fact, um, I got a call the other night from um, some poll. They were doing some uh, 
poll on uh, teenage drinking, alcoholism, whatever, and <clears throat> one of the questions they finally got around to after they got my answers was, did I identify myself as a born-again Christian or an evangelical Christian? Well, I don't know, what it, well, I don't know what the, if there's supposed to be a difference in those two terms, but I said, I'm just a Christian. You know, a, a born-again Christian, that's, like, that's kind of like being redundant, right? That's, you know, that's like saying jumbo big. What? If you're born again, you're a Christian, not a born-again Christian. Uh, evangelical Christian, I have no idea what that is. That's some term that denominations have made up to categorize themselves. I don't know. Do I evangelize? Yes. Does that make me evangelical? No. That makes me a Christian. Because a Christian evangelizes, a Christian spreads the gospel. So I don't know what that what the uh, the uh, pollster meant by that, but nonetheless, I told her I'm just a Christian. She said, "Born again or evangelical?" I said, "Just a Christian." Now I don't know what she put down. She probably checked one or the other, but I said, "I'm just a Christian." Why? Because that is the name I wear. Look what James says in James two. Or excuse me, uh, let's just while we're in and First uh, Peter four, let's back up to verse fourteen. Look what Peter says. Peter says, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ. Now, when I hear people talking, and they're talking about individuals in different religious groups, they're often reproached for being whatever they are. Seventh-day Adventists, Mormons, usually they're the one, the Jehovah's Witness, they're usually the ones that are reproached and ridiculed for what they are. But you know what? They're not reproached for the name of Christ. Jehovah's Witnesses don't even believe Jesus is the Son of God. They believe he is just Michael the Archangel. So they're certainly not reproached for the name of Christ. They don't wear the name of Christ. They call themselves Jehovah's Witness. Well, what about the, the, the Mormons? They, they're not reproached for the name of Christ. They don't call themselves Christians. They're, they're Latter-day Saints. See what I'm talking about? So if you're reproached for the name of Christ, Happy are you. Well, you know what? I'm happy to wear the name of Christ because it is a worthy name. Do you realize that a Christian, being called a Christian, is indeed a worthy uh, a name? It's a worthy name to wear. In James chapter 2 and verse 7, listen to what James says. James says, Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which you are called? It's a worthy name to be called Christians. Why is it some people are ashamed of being called a Christian? They're so ashamed of it, they'll say, well, I'm a Christian, but then they'll throw in what they are religiously, really, you know, Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Pentecostal, whatever it is. Now, friends, I want you to, I want you to think about this. If you're talking about what is a Christian, a Christian uh, wears the name of Christ. He's not going to wear some other name. She's not going to wear some other name. But notice this, a Christian, that's what a Christian is. A Christian also does not act like the world. Now, I can tell a lot about a Christian. If someone says they're a Christian, I can tell a lot about them by the way they act, the way they talk, the way they, the way they live. Notice, in 1 Peter chapter 4, let's go back to 1 Peter 4 here. 1 Peter 4 and verse 4. Listen, listen to what Peter says. Peter says, wherein... They think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. They think you're strange because you don't act like them. Well, you know what? If people who claim to be Christians are acting like the world, I say they're not Christians. And I say the same thing about people who support causes that are contrary to <clears throat> to sound doctrine. If someone supports abortion, someone supports gambling or drinking or things like that, cursing, you know what? That, they're not a Christian. And I'm kind of surprised at some of these so-called Christians and who they vote for. You know, there's, there's candidates out there that say, yeah, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're all for partial birth abortion. All right? We're all for abortion. Uh, both of the Democratic uh, candidates will be for abortion. Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, and uh, Donald Trump uh, is on record saying he's for partial birth abortion. A president, uh, Trump, would not ban partial birth abortion. So 
Where, where, where's the line here? I'm, I'm saying, friends, Christians don't act like the world. In other words, the world thinks a Christian is strange because they are so different. Look at verse 5. He says, Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the, the quick and the dead? All right? So you, you're not running to the same excess and riot as they are. They're going to speak evil of you. Right? They're going to talk bad about you. They're going to make fun of you. Listen, if I hear people talking, and it's not just, I'm not talking about just political candidates here. I'm talking about everyday run-of-the-mill people out on the street who profess to be Christians, and yet what comes out of their mouth is some of the most ungodly things. Like this, in Ephesians 4, verse 29. Ephesians 4, in verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may uh, minister grace unto the hearers. No corrupt communication. You know what? When, when people say they're Christians and then they tell the dirty jokes, they tell the racist jokes, the off-color jokes, you know what? Ah, are you really a Christian? A Christian doesn't do that. A Christian would let corrupt speech come out of their mouth. They wouldn't be cursing. Uh, the, the fellow that calls in here all the time and, and just, you know, when you, hit, when you hit the button, he's letting out a blue streak. I, I know he's not a Christian. I know he's not a Christian. Now look what Paul says in Ephesians 5. Come on down. He says, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. And walk in love as Christ hath also loved us and hath given himself for us and, uh, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet, uh, sweet smelling savor. Now look at verse 3 here. But fornicators, but fornication and uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh saints. Those things do not belong in a Christian's life. But you know what? There's a lot of so-called Christians in these so-called man-made churches that will, on one hand, profess to be God-fearing, God-loving Christians, born-again evangelical Christians, we'll use their term, and yet they're fornicating, they're, they're caught up in all kind of uncleanness, covetousness. Well, you know what? That is not what saints do. And so let me talk to members of the church. You know what? That's the same thing to be said about members of the church. Listen, fornicators do not go hand in hand with saints. So if you're out there shacking up and sleeping around, you need to quit that because if it's found out, members of the church, they'll withdraw from you. You cannot live like the world and be a Christian. A Christian lives apart from the world. Look at this, verse 4. He says, Neither filthiness nor foolish talking or jesting, which are not uh, convenient, but rather giving of thanks. These are the things that don't belong in a Christian's mouth. They're not convenient. What they should be doing is giving things, things that are built up, that are building up and edifying. So when I hear, when I hear a so-called self-professed Christian curse, I say, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They're not a Christian. They're not a Christian. And so, you see what we're talking about, friends? You can tell what a Christian does just by looking at the context of the verses that, that talk about uh, being a Christian. He says, notice this in verse, verse 5, For this ye know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is, a, uh, who is an adulterer, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. You mean to tell me you want to get to heaven? and you're acting and talking and living like that? Listen, homosexuals will not get to heaven, and therefore a homosexual cannot be a Christian. 
You cannot live a Christian life and live a life of homosexuality. Not possible. It's just not possible, friend. So you look at lifestyles, you look at language, you look at words they speak and how they act, and you say, well, I, I know it's a Christian or not. <clears throat> so a Christian is someone who, has, who, who lives differently from the world. Why? Because a Christian has obeyed the gospel. Now look, in 1 Peter chapter 4, remember, we're, we're staying primarily in the context of, of the verses that talk about being a Christian. Verse 16 is the one that says Christian. You know, if any man suffers as a Christian... Well, look at verse 17. This is what Peter says. He says, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Now watch it. He says, The, the house of God. And he says, uh, And it first must begin at us. What, if it first must begin at us, what shall the end of those that obey not the gospel of God? What's the end of those that don't obey the gospel of God? Well, he just said that Christians are going to, are going to be the, be, uh, the beginning of the judgment. Judgment's going to start with them. What's going to happen to those who don't obey the gospel? He just told you what a Christian is, someone who has obeyed the gospel. Someone who has not obeyed the gospel, not a Christian. See how that easy that is? So when I'm saying, well, who's a Christian? A Christian will not speak like the world, like someone who's in the church of man. They will not talk like someone who's in the church of man. They have obeyed the gospel that separates them from the world and from the churches of men. Now, friends, when I hear someone talking about their salvation, I don't, I, I don't, I don't hear the Bible use terms that some of these so-called Christians do. Get saved, Right? Born again evangelical Christian. I, those phrases aren't in the Bible. So that tells me something about it. That tells me something about that person. When I hear people talking, they say your church, my church, our church, stuff like that, that tells me, you know what, these, these people aren't Christians. They're not talking like the Bible. They haven't obeyed the gospel. They haven't obeyed the gospel. Well, what did a person do to become a Christian? See, we're trying to figure out what a Christian is so we can find out who is a Christian. What did a person do to become a Christian? Now listen, if a person says that they are a Christian, they will know what they did. They will know what they did. Listen, in Luke chapter 1, Luke 1, verse 4. Actually, we're going to just read verse, we'll start in verse 1. <clears throat> Luke 1, beginning of verse 1. Luke says, For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most assuredly believed among us. Now listen. Luke says there are some people out there that are trying to write down things that we most certainly believe. Now, obviously, there are some things wrong with that because he's going to write things that are definitely what they believe. So you, you need to be careful about what, you, what you're hearing and about what you're believing because it may not be the actual truth. He says some people have taken it in hand to write down things that we most surely believe among us, but notice, verse 2, he said, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers and ministers of uh, the word. It seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding of all things from the uh, very beginning, from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theopolis. He says, so I'm going to write it down in order so that you can know. I was there. I have eyewitness. I have inspiration. He says that thou mightest know the certainty of those things where, uh, wherein thou hast been instructed. 
I'm going to tell you so you can know for sure. Now, friends, here's my point. People say that they're Christians, and you ask them, well, what did you do to be saved? Oh, and you get all kinds of stories. You get all kinds of stories. What did you, what did you do to be saved? You know, in the Bible, they ask the question, what must I do to be saved? And they got a certain answer. But you ask people today, what did you do to be saved? And boy, they, you get every, you ask 10 people and you get 12 answers. Oh, oh, well, I was, out on, I was out on the tractor. I was out, out mowing the yard. Oh, I was drunk in the ditch. And oh, I woke up, my angels around me, and I had this warm, fuzzy feeling. And I just, you know, I, I had this, that, and other. Well, can you show me in the Bible? Can you show me in the Bible? Because listen, People who know that they are Christians, they can show you what they did to obey the gospel. Now, the man that called in and talked to Caleb, I was kind of interested in what he's having to say because he was wanting Caleb to give an answer about why Caleb believed what he believed. And then when Caleb did, he, he said him like he was self-righteous. Oh, you just self-righteous. You, do, you must know you, who, who made you, I'm paraphrasing, but it's like, you some uppity person because you know for certain what you believe? Well, friends, what's the alternative? Not knowing what you believe? Would you want us to get on TV and go, well, I don't really know what I'm talking about. I don't really know what the Bible says, but this is what I think feel. Would you be happy with that? No. But when you tell people what the Bible says, when you make sure you're giving people a word from the Lord, then they get mad because you're knowing of a surety what you believe. Look at this. In, first, in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 14, 2 Timothy 3 and verse 14, Paul says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of. Now he's telling Timothy, you continue in these things, the things you've learned and been assured of. Why? Knowing of whom thou hast learned them. You know what? The reason I continue preaching and teaching what I do is because I am assured of what's in this book. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 21, 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 21, he says, prove all things, hold fast to that which is good. Friends, the only way you prove, the only way you can prove things is if you test it. You examine, listen, if we're telling you something's in the Bible, go to the Bible and, and verify it. Go to the Bible and make sure of it. But yeah, when we show something from the Bible, oftentimes that's when we get in trouble. People think we're mean or hateful or arrogant, conceited, because self-righteous, because after all, you're telling people you're right. Well, if I'm wrong, I'd appreciate if you tell me. If you'll show me, if you'll show me where I'm wrong from the Bible, guess what? You're doing me a favor. So I would ask the, I would ask the caller that called in last hour. Look, if you know it, show it. If you're a Christian, if you profess to be a Christian, my friend, then if you know what you did to be saved, then show it. If you know it, show it. That's simple. If you know it, show up. You know what? How many times? If I had a dollar every time I asked someone, show it to me in the Bible, you know what they say? I ain't got to show it to the Bible. You know why? Because you can't. You can't find what you did to be saved and wound up in a man-made church in the Bible to save your souls. And you know what, friends? You're going to have to. Your soul depends on it. Your soul depends upon you finding what you did in order to know that your sins are forgiven, it depends upon you finding it from this book. And friends, if you can't find it in this book, are you really a Christian? Can you really say for certainty that you know that you're saved? See, John says in 1 John 2 and verse 3, John, 1 John 2, notice in verse 3, he said, and hereby we do know that we know him. If we keep his commandments, you can know that you know. Now, if you don't know, if you know or not, then do you really know of assuredly? 
Do you really know of a certainty that you're saved, that you're a Christian? I'm just saying, friends, the only way you can know for sure is if, if it's in the Bible. So you need to show it in the Bible. If you know it, show it. Matt, go ahead. All right, thank you. You've got the phone lines up. All right. All right, well, let's look on. So a Christian, a Christian has obeyed the gospel, and he knows. He knows what he did. Well, let's ask this question then. What, what do uh, uh, Christians do, or what did the person do to become a Christian? When I look at the next verse, and remember we're looking at these verses that just talk about Christians. When I look at Acts 26 and verse 28, you know what I find? I find <clears throat> that King Agrippa says to Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Now, friends, that tells me something. That tells me something about becoming a Christian. It means Agrippa understood that he had to be persuaded to become a Christian. In other words, you're not a Christian just because you're born to Christian parents. You're not a, you're not a Christian just because you, born, you were born to some people that had a certain belief. Now, if you were a Jew, I guess you were, you were born a Jew. But you're not born a Christian, not from parents. I remember talking to um, uh, Dr. Jerry Carter right here in Reedsville, Reedsville Baptist Church. And he said, I said in his office, he said that he was Baptist born and Baptist bred, and when he died, he'd be Baptist dead. Well, I don't know if you was Baptist born and Baptist bred, but I know this. If you die Baptist, that's exactly what you'll be, is you'll be dead. You know why? It gets back to certainty. Listen, you can't find the Bible. Now, Agrippa knew that you had to be persuaded, that, that, a, that a person had to be persuaded to become a Christian. Now, how was that going to take place? How did that happen? Well, it happened by reasoning. It happened by reasoning. Look at Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17, verse 2. Now, friends, this is the biggest Bible study in the, in the, in the world right now going on. So, hope you have your Bibles and taking notes. But Acts 17, verse 2, look at this. And Paul, as the manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbaths they reasoned with them out of the Scripture. He reasoned with them. He mingled thought with thought. He tried to open up their mind, let them think, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and also... and risen again from the, uh, from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. He reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. What a novel idea. Reasoning with people out of the Scriptures. You know what? There's a lot of people, you pick your Bible up and you say, well, let me show you in the Bible. Oh, no, 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 no. They want to know what you believe but the minute you open up the Bible, I ain't going to argue with you. Again, the, the caller last hour. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm not going to argue with you. Well, we're not arguing. How about we reason together? How about you show me a verse about why you believe what you believe, and I'll show you a verse about why I believe what I believe. And let's see if we can come to an agreement on what the Bible is saying, because if those two vers verses disagree, then we've made a mistake somewhere. Something is wrong. One of us Maybe both of us are wrong, but both of us can't be right if we're disagreeing. Paul reasoned with them. Paul reasoned with them out of the Scriptures. Look at this. In Acts 24, uh, Acts 24, and verse 24. Now this, <clears throat> this is not Agrippa. This is that's going back a couple of uh, uh, rulers. But notice this. This is when Paul is standing before Felix, the governor. And he says, After certain days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla, which was a Jewess, he sent for Paul. Now notice, he sent for Paul and heard him concerning his faith in Christ. Now someone, if someone asks you about your faith in Christ, what are you going to do? Well, see, I know what a Christian would do because I know what Paul did. Now look what Paul did. 
Paul was asked a question about his faith in Christ. And notice what verse 25 says. And as he reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled and answered, Go thy way for this time. When I have a convenient season, I will call for thee. You know what Felix did? He trembled at the reasoning. You know why? Because he was reasoning. It was making sense to him. He asked Paul, what about your faith in Christ? And you know what Paul wound up doing? Paul wound up convincing Felix that he was wrong. <gasps> How do I know he convinced Felix he's wrong? Because Felix trembled. Felix realized, you know what? I'm in trouble where I am. Now, my point is this, friends. If someone asks me about my faith, and I'm doing what Paul did, and I'm reasoning with them from the Scripture about my faith in Jesus Christ, you know what's going to happen? I could very well convince them that they're wrong. Now, is that such a bad thing? Am I being haughty and high-minded and self-righteous if I do that? No. I'm just letting the Bible do its work. See how easy it is, friends? And that's what a Christian does. A Christian became a Christian by being persuaded, or a person became a Christian by being persuaded that they were wrong. Now, that's what, that's what, um, uh, that's what Paul was doing. Paul was reasoning. But you know what? Most Christians don't want to reason. They, will, they chalk it up to, well, that's arguing. No, friends, it's not arguing. Why do you think it's arguing? See, a Christian doesn't say, well, I don't argue the Scripture. A Christian says, you know what, I'm going to reason with you out of the Scripture. Let's reason. Let's mingle thought with thought. Let's open an ledge. Let's, let's get the Bible out. Let's crack the Bible open. And let's see if we can come to an agreement on what the Bible is saying. Let's see if we can understand what the will of God is. Now, that's in the context, that's in the context of Agrippa using the word a Christian. But you know what else I learned about Christians? I learned that Christians, uh, persons became Christians by being persuaded. But you know what else I learned? I learned that a Christian has, a person has to have believed in order to become a Christian. Now, we know Hebrews 11 verse 6 Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, Faith, without faith is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you have to believe God. So we know that a person has to have faith in what they're hearing in order to do anything else. In order for it to change their lives, that is to become a Christian, they have to, <clears throat> they have to believe what they're hearing. Now, I want you to notice something. Remember, uh, Agrippa said to Paul, almost thou persuadest me to become a Christian in verse 28. But look what verse 27 tells us. Paul says, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Now what has Paul done? In this, in this sermon that Paul is preaching to Agrippa, he has convinced, he's told Agrippa, he's reminded Agrippa, and Festus is there too. Festus thinks that Paul's mad. <clears throat> but he says, look, you know everything that's going on. This wasn't done in a corner. You know, you know that the, uh, the things that were prophesied about Christ, you know what's going on. Do you believe? I know you believe, Agrippa. Agrippa, I know you believe. So Agrippa had believed that the prophecies concerning Christ had been fulfilled and that Jesus Christ, whom the Jews crucified at the hands of the Romans, he was indeed the Messiah, the one the prophets had spoke of. And Paul says, Agrippa, do you believe? I know you believe. And that's when Agrippa said, you know what, Paul? You almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Almost. See, it takes belief. It takes belief. Now, you know what else I've learned? I learned it takes repentance, too. You know what Paul said when he was talking to Agrippa? He see, when Paul's talking to Agrippa, he's also telling his, 
his story about how he was converted. He's giving a defense of the things that he was doing to crucify Christians, persecute Christians, and then how he met the Lord on the road to Damascus. And you know what he says in verse 20? Look at verse 20. He says, Paul said, when I obeyed the gospel, let's back up for a minute, he said, where on, on to, upon, uh, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not di disobedient to the heavenly vision, but showed first to, unto them of Damascus and of Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and, uh, and then to the Gentiles that they should repent, turn to God, and bring forth works meet for repentance. Now Paul is preaching repentance. Paul's preaching repentance. So I know that Agrippa knows he needs to repent. And Paul knows that he already believes. So he says, I'm preaching that they need to repent. You know what? That's what exactly what a person needs to do to become a Christian. They need to repent. They need to believe, repent, and then they need to confess Christ. Look at this. They need to confess Christ. Acts 26 and verse 15, that's what Paul did on the road to Damascus when he met the Lord. He said, Who art thou, Lord? And Jesus said, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. So he confessed that Jesus is the Lord. He said, what must I do? And uh, Paul's going to say uh, in another account of the same events in Acts 22 verse 16, he said, I was told, why tarest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So in order to be a Christian, a person has to be persuaded. What? Be persuaded that there is a God, that he has a son, Jesus Christ, that his son died on the cross for our sins. That person, this must be persuaded to repent of his sins. He must be persuaded that he has to confess Jesus Christ before man and be persuaded that he must be baptized for the remission of sins. Now, are you really a Christian? Have you done those things? Most people say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Well, you know what, I don't, friends, I don't know you're a Christian. Now, here's something else I'm going to tell you about a Christian. I know this about being a Christian that sets true Christians apart from all other people who claim to be Christians. And friends, if you don't remember anything else from this lesson, I hope you remember this. When it comes to you thinking that you're a Christian, look at Acts chapter 26 and verse 28. All right, phone call. Acts 26 and verse 28. Agrippa said, Thou almost persuades me to be a Christian. And then we'll get to the next verse. We'll get to this verse. You're on a word from the Lord. You're on a word from the Lord. Hey, James, how are you? Better than I deserve. Well, so am I. Um, listen, James, you know what? I, I think my mother may have taken me to church before I learned to walk, but I remember going at age two and a half or three and continued until I was 18. I played the piano in church and sang in the choir when I wasn't playing the piano. I was in a Brethren church out here in uh, Martins Hill. Last night I was thinking, um, well, oftentimes I think, why should I believe something that's written just because it's written? Now, I do believe, and... Uh, the cre a creation and the wonder of birds and trees and okay. the earth. And as far as, you know, like I said, believing something that was written, would you necessarily believe something that you read that you weren't there to witness, you yourself? Are you talking about the Bible? Uh, yes, sir. So you're saying you don't know whether you should believe the Bible or not just because it's written down? Not just, just, I mean, if somebody hands me a book and says, read this, and then I want you to uh, be baptized saying that you believe it's true and confessing that it's true, 
when I okay. wasn't there to witness it. And and well, and I do have a little. I, like I said, I believe in the wonder okay. of trees and birds okay. and the sky and clouds. Okay. But it's well, so hard to me to believe in the Bible. Well, here's the thing, though. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So how do you know that there is a God? Do you believe in God? Do you believe there's a God? I, I couldn't understand you. Do you believe in God? Well, sometimes I think that's what the Greeks called on when they were scared of something. They may have hollered out. Okay, here's my, here, here's, here's my question, though. Just because you weren't there when it happened, I mean, were you there when, do you believe that uh, 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 Abraham Lincoln was shot? Uh, yes. Why? You weren't there. Were you? No, no, no I wasn't. But do you believe George Washington more, lived? It's more up to date than the Well, well what does Bible. that mean? My, do you, you know, let me, let me say this. As far as as far as proof of, of the Bible, there are more manuscripts, pieces of manuscripts, writings of the New Testament, all right, from the first century. There are more uh, uh, examples of New Testament scripture from the first century than there are copies of Shakespeare. Now, do you believe Shakespeare wrote Shakespeare? I don't know. Well, I'm just saying, <laughs> Homer's Iliad. Uh, some of the class, some of the classic writings, some of the classic writings uh, in in our history, we have no we have no problem saying yes, Shakespeare wrote that book, or Homer wrote that book. But there's not near the evidence that they really wrote it as there is the Bible. Now I'm, I'm really having no, to I'm, not, I'm really having to condense I'm not, this. I'm really having to condense no. this because because I'm running out of time. But I'm just saying, there's there's more evidence that the Bible is true than some of the other books we have that we take for granted are true. I'm, there's more evidence that Jesus walked the face of the earth than George Washington. That's why I'm saying. Yes, that's, sir. That's why I'm saying. Yes, sir. That's yes, why I believe sir. the Bible. So, Sir. it sounds it sounds to me like it sounds to me like if you had a Bible study on uh, proving the Bible is true, that might help you. Yes, sir. I, I believe sir. I I believe Micah is no, teaching. I, I I I don't care too much about Shakespeare because I heard he was a homosexual. Okay, well, so my I point is, even, my, all right, my, uh, you know, but all right. My point is, my say point what is, you're saying. Okay. Yes, I understand. Okay. Well, let me tell you, I think Micah is teaching a class on, like, the Bible, how we got the Bible, or manuscripts, something like that. I'm not real sure uh, exactly what, what it's over, but it might be, it would be something that would help you uh, increase your faith that this book is indeed the Word of God. Okay? Okay. All I, right. I don't have transportation, but... Uh, Okay, well... Thank you very much. All right, well, we know who you are, and uh, I'll make sure that someone gives you a call if you want to ride. Okay. Okay? All right, okay. thanks for your call. Thank you. All right, that's a little excursion, but that's okay. All right, friends, now listen. Here's what I want you to notice about Paul. And we know he was a Christian. Paul said, Agrippa said, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Here's what Paul said. He said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both, watch it, were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. He said, I wish everybody was like I am. I wish everybody was a Christian like I am. Paul, you've almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Well, I wish that everybody here wasn't just almost, but that they were all together just like I am. Now, you know what, friends? A true Christian doesn't have any problem saying to people, you should be like I am. But you know what? When I talk to the Mormons, when they come to my door, I ask them, do I have to be in the church of the Latter-day Saints to be saved? Oh, no. No, 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 no. 
When I talk to the Methodists, do I have to be a Methodist church to be saved? Oh, no, 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 no. I talk to people all the time. Oh, no, you don't have to be in that church to be saved. I talk to uh, the guy up here at uh, Calvin Adams at uh, uh, Amazing Grace or whatever Baptist church up here in Eden. Do I have to be in the, in the Baptist church to be saved? Oh, no, 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 no. You know we can play it. They will tell you, you do not have to be like they are to be saved. That is not what a Christian says. Let me smile a little bit. But friends, that's not what a Christian says. A Christian says, I want you to be exactly like I am. I want you to follow me even as I follow Christ. Now, Agrippa said, you've almost persuaded me to be a Christian. Paul says, I want everybody to be not just almost, but altogether like I am. Now, when I, so when I hear people say, well, do your own thing. Go to the church of your choice. You don't have to be a member of, the church, of my church to be saved. You don't have to be a member of, the, of this man-made church to be saved. You know what, friends? That tells me right there, they're not true Christians. They're not Christians because they don't believe the church they're in or what they believe is essential to salvation. But you know what? I will tell you flat out, I am a Christian. Just like Paul was a Christian, and I want to be a Christian just like Paul in the sense of I'm going to tell people, be examples of me, be ye followers of me, even as also I am a Christ. I'm not saying follow James or follow Paul, but follow Christ just like we are. And Paul said, I wanted everybody to be a Christian. Notice he didn't say be a Baptist, but listen, that is our job, and that's what I want to be like. Here's Larry Serber, the late Larry Serber, the atheist. Listen to what he says. Okay, but don't you think Johnny and them believe that it's their job you got audio to save you from hell and they're preaching all the time and if they see you doing something off, they've got to tell you, don't you feel like they're committed? They don't believe like you do. Johnny Robertson, James Oldfield, Mark McManus, and Micah and Caleb, Definitely they believe don't they've, they've got to convert you. Mm -hmm. They've got to save you from hell and if they don't, they're not doing their job. That's the way they feel. Okay. I don't know how they feel. I mean, I, I know exactly how they feel because I study, I mean, you I study I mean? them all the time. I mean, I, you don't I, I watch their shows. No, I don't. I don't. What's well, the heck can start. you know how they feel? I, mean, I know no, how they no, feel. No, no, no. I, I mean, I, I know exactly how they feel because I study. I mean, I, I know exactly how they feel because I study. I mean, I, I know exactly how they feel because I study. Now, Larry understood. We believe with a strong conviction that you need to be like we are or we're not doing our job and you're going to be lost. Now, friends, that's the way Paul was. Now, here's the third thing about a Christian. <clears throat> third thing about a Christian, we've already learned he wears the name of Christ. He wears the name of Christ. I've got four minutes. So I'm going to try to get through this. You know what, friends? Uh, a Christian teaches others. In Acts 11, verse 26, let's read this verse. We'll make a few application points here. Acts 11, 26. And when he had found him, talking about Barnabas, when he had found him, uh, and brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves together, teaching uh, and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. You know what you know what Christians did? Number one, they taught much people. And friends, if you don't like people being taught, if you don't want to teach people, that tells me you're not a Christian. You know what I have seven, uh, Joe's Witness come to my house? They don't want to come back for a Bible study. They're not Christians. Here, people don't want to study the Bible, don't want to teach me where I'm wrong. They're not Christians. But the early church, they were Christians, and that's what they did. And you know what else they did? You know what else they did, friends? Notice this. They assembled. They assembled. The Bible says that Christians, they assembled themselves with the church, and they were called Christians, first of Antioch. You know what, folks? Uh, folks Christians assemble. On the first day of the week, Acts 20, verse 7, when the disciples came together to break bread, right? The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch, and they came together on the first day of the week to break bread. They observed the Lord's Supper on the first day of the week. In Acts 16, verses 1 and 2, they laid by a store on the first day of the week. If someone tells me they don't have to go to church, they don't have to assemble in order to be a Christian, they are not a Christian. I'm just reading the Bible, friends. 
We're just reasoning together. Listen, I learned from the verse that talks about Christians. You know what? Christians assemble on the first day of the week. They come together in one place for, uh, to observe the Lord's Supper. They, don't, they didn't observe it quarterly, annually, third blue moon in the second quarter of Sagittarius or whatever. I don't know. They didn't do all that stuff. They observed the first day of the week. Every first day of the week, they observed the Lord's Supper. They, they preached and taught out of the scriptures. They prayed, they sang, and they laid by and store up on the first day of the week. They did all these things. Why? Because they were Christians. So someone says, well, I'm a Christian. Well, where do you, where do you worship? Well, I don't worship anywhere. You're not a Christian. So I'm a Christian. Where do you worship? You got women preachers? Yeah, not a Christian. Someone says, I'm a Christian. Where do you worship? Do you have the Lord's Supper every first day of the week? No. Nope. You're not a Christian. I'm sorry, friends. But notice this, they assembled with the church. Last point. Which church was it? Which church was it? They assembled with the church. Which one was it? Was it the Baptist church, Methodist church, Seventh-day Adventist, Presbyterian, Catholic, Lutheran, Mormon? Which one was it? You know what, friends? It wasn't any of those because there wasn't but one church in the first century. It was the church of Christ. It was the church that Christ built, Matthew 16 18, that he shed his blood for, Acts 20, verse 28. And it was the church in which all the saved were added to, Acts 2, verse 47. There wasn't but one church, and therefore there's only one kind of church of which you can be a member of and still be truly called a Christian. Now, friends, I'm going to tell you, can you know about Christians? Listen, I'll tell you who's a Christian. Actually, I'll tell you who's not a Christian. Not any of these people running for president, not the Pope, not Trump. Trump's a Presbyterian, Cruz is a Baptist, Carson's a Seventh-day Adventist, uh, Bernie Sanders is a Jew, a, a social communist Jew, Clinton's a Methodist, so-called, and Rubio's a so-called Catholic. None of them are Christians. But friends, you can be a Christian if you obey the gospel, just like they did in the first century. If you do what they did in the first century, I guarantee you, you'll be a Christian just like they were in the first century. And if we can help you do that, we want to do that very thing. 276-340-2653 if I can help you. Until then, thanks for watching. Let us know if we can help. Always make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night.